So um, many of us uh, commute to work, some of us work at home, so let's deal with both of the issues. Um, commuting to work, the most common ways are public transport or driving, okay? Um, if you drive to work, uh, you're, you again are going to try and find the closest parking spot to the door of your work so you don't have to do anything. Well, I'm going to suggest that what you do is actually find a parking spot that's safe, but a parking spot that's a mile to two miles away from work and walk, okay? And that's going to give you two to four miles a day of walking that you wouldn't have normally had, okay? And it's not going to be the end of the world if you plan, you know, you can walk pretty fast. If you plan your, your, your commute, it's not a problem. What drives me nuts when I take public transport is people are sitting, you know, reading a paper or just listening to music, waiting for a bus, a trolley, a train. What are you doing? This isn't The Walking Dead. You don't need to be a zombie. Walk one or two stops at each side of your trip. So before you get on the train or the bus, walk a couple of stops. And I bet you'll probably be, be at work faster. On the other end, you know, when you're getting to work, get off a stop or two before and walk the difference. You know, that could be a mile or two miles each leg, so you're doing two to four miles a day five days a week, okay, four fives, 20 miles, times that, times 52, that's a lot of miles, that's a lot of calories. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're driving and you, you, drive, you park in a, a um, you know, one of the multi-layered uh, parking lots, just go to the top, don't even worry about if there's parking spots at the bottom, and either walk the stairs or very carefully walk the, the ramp uh, down. There are just so many things that you can do um, to really hack that. Well, and then, um, and let me interrupt yeah. for just one quick second, because you know a lot of people are going, wait a minute. You know, I'm sure they're saying, well, I don't have the extra half hour to walk that one or two miles. And you know, some people might be right. Maybe their day is so full. I would challenge them that everybody can find some time in the day. The on the opposite side, you can multi you can multi use that time. So if you are already listening talk to your phone, well, you could talk on your phone. And it, another thing you could do would be if you um, are into personal growth, which obviously you are because you're watching our show, you can take a podcast along with you, take an audio book along with you, and at least listen to it as you're, you know, as you're walking. So not only are you becoming more mentally fit, but you're not only becoming more physically fit, but you're becoming more mentally fit as well. And that ends up being, and I think, you know, it's part of, you know, part of what a lot of other life hackers talk about as well is the fact of figuring out how you can multi-purpose the time you're spending to get not necessarily multitask, but multi-purpose so that you can get the most out of your day and the most out of your exercise and everything else. Right, Paul? Right. Absolutely. It's, it's all about that. And, um, uh, I, I just wanted to add one thing. Um, if you work at home like I do, uh, regardless of whether you have dogs, go for a walk in the morning because I can tell you, even if you're walking, so let's say if you park a mile or so away from work, that time can also be spent categorizing, prioritizing what you have to do and kind of thinking about how to approach things. And that is going to make your day way more efficient, way less stressful. And so even if you work at home, do that. Go for a walk. And then I'd say to everybody before, you know, after you've eaten your meal um, and you're going to go to bed, go for a walk because it does wonders for you. Uh, not only do you get to see what's going on around you, uh, get some fresh air, but it will, you know, eventually it'll signal to your, to your body it's time to go to sleep and it helps so many things. And plus, how many times do you have to watch the crap on the news? They just repeat it and repeat it. So just yeah. watch it once, go for a walk. Anyway, um, so there, there are many things, but yes, the, the secret is, and you know, I, I talk about this uh, on the Life Hacker Diet website, but what I learned was I was living asynchronously. It was exercise or working. When I brought those things together, and I liked your multi-purpose, not multitasking, multi-purpose, now when I work, I'm walking. And I walk 10 to 15 miles a day just working at the computer. Now, that's absurd. I mean, walking, working at the computer is the most um, 
inactive thing. I mean, your brain's active, your hands are active, but nothing else happens. Well, now I'm walking one to one and a half miles an hour, sometimes two miles an hour. I have great music uh, that's coming in uh, that helps me concentrate, and I can power through anything, and I'm just always moving. And, you know, the fact that I can walk, ten, I can have a crappy day at work, but I've still walked 10 to 15 miles, you know? And, and I What's think, bad about that? Exactly. And I think that's the other thing. And I know this is all about simple steps, simple strategies to getting exercise. But if you haven't bought in yet, listen to what Paul just said. The fact of the matter is, even if he has a crappy day at work, he still walked 15 miles. So, quote unquote, what's bad? You know, what, quote unquote, what could be bad about that? Universe, forget what I just said. You understand. People, you know, you understand what I'm talking about. Point is, is that um, when you have something positive, even if your day has been crappy, you can look back and, and it will offset it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. So that when you yeah, have a great absolutely. day, it will make it even better. And when you have a lousy day, it will help to offset. And then you can you can say, well, at least I did this. And at least I accomplished and that. The truth of the matter is uh, being healthy and being active makes you happier. It, it just It just does because your brain's working differently, you're seeing the world differently, and you know you don't get angry. Like when I'm driving now and people get angry at me for doing the stupid, stupidest thing, I'm just sitting there going, oh my God, get a life. It's not important. Go for a walk. That's what they need to do, go for a walk. But yeah. when you're active and you're healthy and, and you know, your body feels good and your mind feels, it's amazing your outlook on life. And, and, you know, it, it just, it makes all the difference. So I think that's an, a very good side effect. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely. Is there yeah. any other before? So I'm, Go ahead. Yep. Yeah. No, I just, I want to get into the food because I love food and I love <laughs> talking about food. So. I was going to say. <laughs> it's lunchtime here. Yeah, I was going to say. So let's get into reinvent the food you love. And to watch the rest of this epic episode now, click on the link below the video. Do it now, you'll be glad you did. Are you still here? What are you waiting for? Watch the rest of this epic episode now by clicking on the link below the video.